What's in the troopy, you might ask? I've had this troopy now for 10 years. It's gone around Australia numerous times. It's done about 140, 150,000 kilometers. And over that time, I've refined what actually goes in the troopy in order to be able to survive in the outback and remote wilderness area. Subscribe, uh, press the notification button. Um, Greeny Flicks channel is all about uh, adventure travel, it'd be four wheel drive or motorcycling. It's about photography, it's about tech stuff. Uh, it's about property investment as well. So what's in the back of the troopy? Let's have a look. Coming around to the back, uh, we've got obviously the, uh, the lights still on, but here we've also got um, some additional lights. So we've got some outside lights and some inside lights. So you can see the general layout. We've got a couple of uh, drawers that slide out and go back in. These go the full length of this back area here, right up to the cargo barrier. I chose to have the five seater so I could have passengers and the cargo area. So on my trips, I can cater for four people. If it's a family with small kids, I can do five. So this would normally be, this plastic container would normally be on top of the roof. Uh, this is actually my washing machine. You basically put in your clothes and water and uh, detergent in there. And then you put it on the roof. And then as you're driving along, it, uh, particularly if it's rough roads, then you've got the natural agitation going on and the whole thing gets sh shook and your clothes get washed while you're driving along. So in here we've got uh, water, we've got 20 litres there, almost 25 litres there, also there. Carrying about 60 litres of water inside the car. So let's move that out of the way. I find that these uh, cooler boxes or whiskies are great so you can keep dry food in there or um, fruit or whatever. Obviously you need to pack everything so it doesn't shake. It's great if you can sort of devise things that have, are multifunctional. So they have a storage area and it's a seat. And then oh, this can come out as well. As you can see, uh, the great thing about um, having everything in containers, it means that when you need to take stuff out, you can. And it's great uh, just to be able to throw things around the campsite and still keep them in the containers. And then when you need to pack up, you just put the containers back in. Uh, we've got water and we've got another 20 liters of fuel, the electric drill, a table, and the kitchen actually behind the fridge, a wash up uh, bucket. Uh, for the kitchen and also up the top there we've got just loads of ropes in there ropes and you can just see shackles uh, in the background there so shackles and ropes used all over the place all the time with tarpaulins to control shade and wet weather or whatever on the right side I keep um, basic tools that I need to have access to uh, including WD-40, Lynx deodorant, you might need that, depending if you've got guests or not, wire, bit of canvas, a few plastic bags, and my hacksaws used quite often. Everything is packed tight so that it doesn't shake. That's the main thing about designing how you pack your stuff. So there's my tools, I can actually take that tool kit out if I need to my drill bits i got uh, they have in really good condition nice and sharp so i can handle most situations with my electric drill there and uh, and these drill bits um different type of uh, wrenches and sockets in there more tools in there um a shovel an axe uh what else if I have some carrying metal jerry cans, uh, they, that would be the pour for it. Plus a few odds and ends. I won't go in, in great detail. It just that's the gist of it. When I need to pump up tires, I can just slide that back and get access to the air compressor. 
Uh, a good quality air compressor is mandatory in four wheel drives uh, because you're forever adjusting your tyres, particularly when you go onto sand. I can connect this up to the Anderson plug, which is underneath here, and then I've got power here plus the hoses. The great thing about having uh, it located here is that I can get to all the tyres on the car, and if I have a trailer, then I can get to all the car. Uh, all the tyres on the trailer as well with the one hose. I've got a spare hose in there just in case that actually breaks. This gets really, really hot, so when you want to disconnect it, you need a glove, otherwise you're going to burn your fingers after pumping up four tyres or so. When I go on tours and I have guests, the first few days is orientation to a certain extent where people start to get used to the idea that everything goes back always in the same place uh, regardless of uh, who's using it or whatever this other drawer here we've got um, electrical and uh, multimeter there i carry a lot of cable ties right now i'm really low i need to stock up again um, some mozzie repellent uh, the burning sticks at uh, citronella sticks there you go uh, good for camps well Good for caravan parks and particularly where you're around uh, where there's water and there's mosquitoes etc then that helps to limit that the jaffle iron great around the fire when you just want to make a quick meal um, put in your bread in there put it in the fireplace cook it up and you've got nice toasty jaffles there it's amazing how many times you have to use the umbrella uh, i always carry lots of gloves in the car so whenever we stop uh, we catch, we collect firewood, whatever. Uh, always uh, putting on the gloves. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get a scratch, a splinter, a cut. Uh, in in moist areas, your skin gets infected really quickly. In dry areas, dirt gets in. So always carry gloves and always use gloves. Standard uh, repair kit is uh, tape. The reinforced tape it's amazing how many things you can re repair with reinforced tape and then things actually hold in place if you need to make things waterproof then the duct tape which is more flexible and it can make things waterproof uh, if uh, for some reason you've got a hole in something that needs to be waterproof uh, insulation tape as well this one needs to be replaced it's been in here for a while you can see how heat's got to it and uh, it's deformed uh, tent pegs, odds and ends all go in here. Um, always carry some paper uh, to help to clean up the area. Uh, this is just a little weather jacket that I keep as well. You can, this tends to be the odds and all, odds and ends drawer. Oh, uh, there's a tow bar in there for conventional when conventional uh, when towing a conventional trailer. All right, so this one. So when I, I can pull out the fridge, when I pull out the fridge, I've got this extra table. This table actually goes here. Which stops the drawer from sliding back in and becomes my work area for the kitchen as well. I can climb up here. So, I mean, it's not perfect, you still need to be a bit of an acrobatic. Uh, to get into the fridge, I've got two sections to the fridge. The bottom section and the top section here. And uh, there's my thermometer uh, sensor uh, for the fridge. So from the cabin uh, in the driver's seat, you can see what temperature it is here in the fridge. Right now, the battery is flat, but there would be a temperature gauge there as well. So, that's... Uh, I normally keep the fridge somewhere around the zero to minus two mark so that anything that is frozen can stay frozen longer down the bottom and then things can stay cool at the top as well. With a sliding table, you just gotta make sure that these wires are out of the way. So don't crimp the wires. Behind here, we've got more water. And, um, what else we got? We got this actually is important a block of wood. It holds the door open so that if you're on an angle, the door doesn't close accidentally. If this drawer is open, the door won't close also. So, but I it's amazing. I, I put this in when I first got the four wheel drive, the Troopy, 
it's over 10 years ago I've never come up with a better system anyway it works it's there uh, jump starter cables hydraulic jack uh, besides the wind-up jack that sits behind that panel there which is a bit of a pain in the neck to get to um, that's my that's a standard jack that comes with the trivi that's where that stays but then I've got this hydraulic jack as well which looks like that's actually in there um, and that's the one I use most often when I'm changing tires so I can just get it out it's easy to get to I'm carrying some oil there and a few other odds and ends a couple of blankets and towels again for emergency purposes at least I've got something if I need something there Voila, so that's pretty much the back. Um, now we will go on to the roof. Of here, air valves, they are actually for the rear suspension. I've got some suspension airbags that provide extra lift to the back when I've got a trailer and I need to um, just level out the car. Up the dock here, got a tyre, got some max tracks. Uh, need to carry at least four max tracks. Uh, carrying two is a bit useless. I find when you do get bogged in sand, particularly on sand dunes, you need two just to get started and then another two to roll onto. And if you need to literally crawl up, you can have one in front of the other, get the car onto the next sand track uh, find the one that got buried, put it in front of the next one and move forward gradually. And you can actually cover, I had to, in one of my Simpson Desert trips, we had to cover about 40 or 50 meters like that, going up a sand dune uh, with a trailer. Um, so it does work. Uh, I put these ropes on because in sand, these tracks do disappear a mile underneath the sand. So you always find your sand tracks, your these case so I've got these max tracks um, right a shovel and a high lift okay the rooftop tent um, I would also be carrying two jerry cans here so another 40 liters of fuel there and the washing machine would go here and then there's enough space here for other odds and ends and lightweight gear that you might want to put up uh, this solar cell um, seems to have just enough power to actually keep the batteries in good condition both the main battery as well as the uh, backup battery have these sort of latches here with these clips that go and then stops it obviously from opening up accidentally everything needs to be secured with a clip otherwise things just open up okay here some vital equipment air filters Bears that I carry for the car, so oil filter, hoses, etc. A billy and a bucket, and more recovery straps. This is an extension strap, so it's not a snatch strap, so it doesn't actually stretch. But it, if you need, if you're stuck on a salt pan, there could be a uh, hundred meters between you and something that can pull you out, or something you can attach yourself to. So. The winch cable plus another 30 meters of, of this strapping plus a few snatch straps. Amazing how much you have to use to get recovery. Use a sand anchor. Um, when you open this up, it basically is an anchor, and this end goes into the sand, digs itself into the sand, and then that, that's another re uh, recovery retrieval point. On the flat, it works really well. If you're on a sand dune and trying to tow the car up, I have had to use max tracks, sand tracks, plus a sand anchor, uh, <laughs> just to, to get myself out of bog in some cases. Some spare suspension, so I've, when the suspension got replaced, and I just kept a couple of old dampeners just in case you need one. It's amazing how things break, and they are there. So that's basically the Troopy. Oh, inside and out a quick snapshot and uh, no doubt I'll make some more videos around specific things uh, in due course 
Hope you've enjoyed that. Remember to uh, subscribe to Greeny Flicks on YouTube. And uh, there's my troopy, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Subscribe, press notifications, and see you on the next video. Cheers.